I'm Dr. Mark Rosenberg, and today I'm going to talk to you about your tendons. Uh, I started talking about some weightlifting last week, and I want to continue on that uh, vein today. Uh, tendons attach muscles to bones. Ligaments attach bones to bones. So one of the things that people should keep in mind that when they train with weights, okay, when they want to uh, use weight training to enhance their posture, uh, to prevent injuries in the long term, it's best if you use lighter weights as part of your training regime to build your tendons. And I'm going to explain what that means. Uh, if I'm going to go with my bicep here, my bicep is this wide. It attaches up here at the shoulder, okay, on either side of what's called the acromion process, and anchors down here, okay, at the uh, radial and ulna junction with the, what's called the humerus. And that's not on the test. Don't worry. And when you contract that bicep, okay, you can actually see this tendon right here, the bicep tendon. Now, bi means two. There are two heads here. And I've seen people that have actually torn one of the heads off and actually rolls up, rolls up into a ball. They could still use their arm, but they've torn one of the tendons off. Don't be that guy or girl. Anyway, uh, this is what you need to think about. If you lift a light weight, now this is 10 pounds. I'm going to walk in a little closer here. If you lift slowly, you can actually see that tendon working. Uh, on most people, when I test them for this, if I go like this, the tendon is very skinny. So if you flex your arm, check your tendon. Okay, My tendon here is close to an inch thick because I've done this training. Now, if you've watched my earlier videos, and if you haven't, you might want to, energy flows through the muscles. So if your bicep is very big and your bicep tendon is very small, this bicep is like a large um, uh, fire hose, and it's condensing down to a garden hose. So there's a lot of strength here, and it's attached to a very small attachment. I'm not telling you, if you wish to have big biceps, I'm not telling you to make your biceps smaller. What I'm telling people to do or asking them to do to prevent injury is make the tendon bigger. We want to train the tendons. Now, most people have right off the bat the correct size tendon for their knee called the patella tendon. If you go down and you feel underneath your kneecap, that patella tendon is broad and thick. Why is that? Because you walk everywhere. That tendon's always getting worked. It's getting worked with high load if you run, Low load, slow, heavy load if you walk up the steps with, with, with groceries or laundry. Uh, so this tendon always gets developed, but some of the other tendons don't. So just, and you can't check all the tendons in your body because some of the tendon attachments are, are broad and flat and they're inside your body. But here's a good way to check the general state of tendons on muscles that aren't commonly used that you would work out in the gym. Say that 10 times fast. It's right here. Check to see how wide your biceps tendon is. And you train it by taking a lightweight 10 pounds and going very slowly to full extension. I'll turn sideways. Very slowly. Now notice when I do that, it's broad and flat here. It's not sticking out like a cord. A lot of people, that tendon sticks out like a cord. It should be broad and flat to prevent injury. So this way, when you go to exert yourself, the large bicep, meets with a relatively large tendon and the net pull across both joints here, both your shoulder and here, okay, is strong. Uh, if it's smaller, okay, all the force is going to be concentrated on that small area between the tiny tendon and the big muscle. But how, so how would you create that? Let's say you avoided the full extension and only did big weights like this. You'd get some tendon building, but you'd build what's called the belly of the muscle. And you wouldn't get the tendon as much as if you isolated it with a lighter weight and went real slow real slow just to just to work right here uh, if I was going to work uh, I was going to do a different video on this but as long as I'm on the subject if I was going to do something for uh, carpal tunnel I would do a two or three pound weight and go real slow this way here you could see the tendon sticking out of my arm can you see that maybe not see oh there we go there's the tendons see that okay so you would do it in for a carpal tunnel with a lightweight not 10 pounds but maybe five pounds two pounds depending on your uh, capacity to hold weight, uh, and you would isolate the arm and work the tendon in all the directions. Again, this is a 10-pound weight. It's all I had. Okay, all the directions, including this way, 
and also turning it over this way. And this way your arm is built in all four compartments and you won't have wrist problems. This is, this is a good check for all your muscles, okay, to check the uh, biceps tendon. Okay, because this is easily accessible, but I can almost guarantee you that if this is thin here, the other tendons attaching other parts of your body are also thin. And that's where the energy is going to get blocked. So if you could picture yourself lifting up something very heavy and this big surge of energy to lift the Volkswagen off the baby. You always hear those stories, mothers lifting cars off babies. How many cars fall on babies? Anyway, but if you could picture this large, gigantuan effort to lift up something heavy, the muscles tense, the muscles strengthen, they contract. And what gives? The tendons. Okay? So that's how we prevent that. And uh, we'll work on that. We'll talk about more about carpal tunnel in the near future and how to prevent those issues. All right. That's today's video.